Thank you very much for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. Thank you for being part of this channel. And as we go through the hurricane season, this channel is not going to be about hype. It's not about clickbait. It is about safety. I can't stress that enough. If you're new to this channel, you can ask uh, all of our friends on this channel, part of this weather community, uh, why I do this, what this channel is about. It's about accuracy, giving you lead time in the storms. So I appreciate you subscribing, taking the time to do that and sharing this with your friends and family so I could get the word out to you of what's going on. I did that last season, that was my promise to you, and I will do that again. That is what this channel is about, period. Okay, all right, so with that said, I wanna get into the forecast for the upcoming season, and I wanna get into one of the things that is not often talked about when it comes to these forecasts that you're gonna see splashed everywhere, uh, splashed across uh, uh, YouTube. And again, a lot of it is clickbait just to drive up the numbers, and that's, that's what it is. But let me show you what I'm seeing with the season and then kind of what I'm thinking as we go down the road. So, El Nino's coming back. All right, you hear a lot about La Nina, in El Nino, and then I'll get into the how many hurricanes I think will develop uh, as we go throughout this. Now, I wanna break this down as simply as I can. El Nino is typically good, that's good for us. That helps prevent storms from forming somewhat. I'll show you that, but that's one ingredient, okay? So that's one of the factors, but El Nino is usually good. Now this map looks kind of crazy. You see it here, all this map is, this is a forecast model telling me El Nino is on the way. This is our European uh, forecast. This here, this is this summer, okay? So what it is, when you get into the red here, it's saying, hey, we're in an El Nino pattern. That's what we're gonna have. Now, the European sometimes is a little bit too aggressive. Sometimes when it sees an El Nino, it jumps into it, kind of gets all in, and it's like, hey, definitely El Nino, definitely less hurricanes. It's gonna be a little more gradual than this, but nonetheless, Everything is pointing to an El Nino. In fact, as it stands right now, it looks like La Nina is done, period, and we are now transitioning already to that El Nino period, which again, is generally good. Okay, what the heck does all of this mean? Now, here, here's a map, and it's simply put in, depending on what device you're using, you could zoom into some of these maps, and uh, I'll keep you posted on this as we go throughout the season as well. So let me break down in an El Nino year. So here it is, here's the Pacific Ocean. Biggest sign, or one of the biggest signs of an El Nino is, you get uh, close, here's the Caribbean, for example, United States here, Mexico here, South America here. In the Eastern Pacific, you have warmer water. So that is a sign that we have an El Nino, and that's exactly what we're gonna have. I wanna tie that into the hurricanes in a second. Now, here's a map just over the last seven days or so. So again, here's the Pacific Ocean. Now with me, take a look at this map. So you see here, here's Mexico, for example, you get over toward Haiti, Dominican Republic, Trinidad, Tobago, uh, Guatemala, El Salvador, Belize, off the Eastern Pacific, just off the coast, so Costa Rica, on the uh, Pacific side of Costa Rica, for example, you see with me some of these reds and oranges, even kind of driving out here into the uh, Pacific Ocean. That's telling me that we're seeing the temperatures in the water warmer than usual, which is an indication flat out, not just over the last seven days, that's kind of a short-term outlook, but that we've been seeing this for a while now. So warmer water, in the Eastern Pacific, that's exactly what we're seeing. So we are getting locked into an El Nino pattern for the upcoming season. All right, Brian, what the heck does that mean? All right, let me try to get into that. Here's the United States. We have Canada up here. Now, usually this gives us a feel. It does give us a feel of the overall weather patterns. It does not tell us everything though, but when you have an El Nino, you got a, a strong Pacific jet that kind of comes in, so jet stream, just kind of storm pattern, or storm track, I should say, that dips down across the south. It's not so much up here, it's more down here. So more in northern Mexico and southern United States. Why is that important to hurricanes? Because that creates kind of a lot of action here in the air, and that will help lead to some turbulence or some uh, wind shear up above us. All right, that may sound a little complicated, so let me break it down specifically. Uh, what's going on is we're going to have some extra wind shear. That is a good thing. So think of wind shear. When we have a hurricane season, we talk about wind shear a lot. And wind shear is good because it helps prevent storms from developing. So think of a thunderstorm. As a thunderstorm builds up, if there is wind shear, that would be winds coming across it, knocking the thunderstorm uh, off. So kind of winds coming from, if the storm's coming this way, you have winds coming this way and it pushes the thunderstorm from developing. It kind of doesn't allow it to build up. 
cuts it off. And that's a good thing because if we don't have these systems developing strong thunderstorms all the way up in the atmosphere, it's going to be hard for them to develop. That's good. We like that. So we're going to have a lot of wind shear out there that will prevent the big buildup of thunderstorms from developing, which means typically less hurricanes. But I'll show you why we're going to have still an above average season. So wind shear though is a good thing. We'll have a lot of extra wind shear. So when I track the storms with you coming off the coast of Africa, uh, a lot of times we'll see uh, them kind of struggling to develop, which we like, and the winds will be kind of making it very hard for those storms to develop. These winds are going to be way up there, so the thunderstorms can't get all the way up. It kind of pushes them off, so it's hard to develop. So wind shear is a good thing, and that typically means less development. So we'll take that. Now on the flip side of things, you always hear about water temperatures. Water temperatures are warm. We're going to have a ton of hurricanes. Now, Every single season, the water temperatures are warm enough for things to develop in the tropics. And that's why sometimes that's hyped. It feels like bath water out there. It's super warm out there. It's very hot out there. The water is so warm. That's almost the case every season. Of course, with that said, some years it's warmer, some years it's uh, not quite as warm. But there's always that, uh, uh, always that kind of threshold, which is 80 degrees Fahrenheit roughly, of uh, water temperatures of getting development. So with that said though, we are seeing again, water temperatures that are going to be a little bit warmer than average. So yes, they're always warm enough, but the issue is they are running pretty well above average. And one spot they're running above average is close to home, close to the Bahamas, United States, Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico. Here's an example. You see this red shading and orange shading here? This is showing us that we have water temperatures that are running way above average. They are running, so we're not just talking about temperatures in the water that are conducive for development. They are plenty conducive for development. So the water temperatures are way warm in spots, warmer than average. So El Nino is a good thing, but these extra warm water temperatures, that's kind of a bad thing. That kind of balances each other out. So yes, El Nino, we will take it. We will take that wind shear all day. That's exactly what we want to hear, but the water temperatures are definitely on the warm side. The other thing I really look at is not so much the water temperatures, but the heat content. We talked a lot about this with, uh, for example, Hurricane Ian and why I was thinking it was gonna blow up into category four or category five. And unfortunately, that's exactly what happened as that rolled into Southwest Florida. The models did not pick up on that, but the conditions were there for that because I was looking at the heat content. So the heat content is not just the water being warm, but it's being warm all the way down, or at least uh, substantially down. So you see the heat content, it's very impressive in the bad sense of the term here. You see this kind of red shading here. So the depth of the warm water is substantial, and that means when a hurricane rolls over the water, it feeds off of the warm water, okay? But then it kind of churns it up, and sometimes it brings up cooler water, and that helps the storm to weaken or at least not get as strong. But because this heat content is so substantial, because the warm water is deep, uh, even below the surface, as a hurricane passes by and it churns up the water, it just brings up more warm, warm water. That's why some of these storms have uh, been exploding, have been going off from a category one or two quickly to category four or five. So again, that is not in our favor as we get into the season. But I wanna get into one of the keys with these forecasts in a second. So let me get into that specific forecast now uh, for the season. Now, an average season in the Atlantic Basin. The Atlantic Basin, we talk about the Atlantic Ocean, uh, that includes the Atlantic Ocean, the Gulf of Mexico, and the Caribbean. That is the Atlantic Basin, and that is uh, what is here. So the average season would be 14 named storms. That means tropical storms or hurricanes when they get a name. 14 named storms, seven of those typically become hurricanes, and three of those major hurricanes, which are category three or greater, which do obviously incredible amounts of damage. So this is an average season uh, in the Atlantic Basin. Now, what I'm seeing this year is that, yes, El Nino is going to help, but the water temperature is extra warm. The depth of the warm water is substantial. We have seen that the last few years. So I do believe we're going to have a slightly above average hurricane season. El Nino and the water temps will balance each other out somewhat, but I expect roughly 
about 16 named storms. That's above average. Again, the average was 14. Eight hurricanes, that's above average. The average was seven. And about three or four major hurricanes, uh, which would be category three or greater. So at least as of now, and again, I'll fine tune this as we get closer to the season, an above average hurricane season slightly but the scare tactics are already out there. Now, some of the uh, forecasts you see for the season, yes, they do talk about the areas that may get hit, uh, where we may see these storm patterns develop, but I, I'd still await and see. None of what I just showed you, none of it tells you if a storm is going to hit you, and that's why I do this channel. Uh, I give you the, uh, until we get something developing, we don't know what's going to hit you. So point being, this forecast is not a landfall forecast. Some people will try to put those out. They're not very accurate. That's just how it is. Um, we don't know if a storm, I don't know if a storm is going to uh, hit a particular spot until it develops and I have a good handle on the overall conditions out there. That's just a matter of fact. So with that said, yeah, slightly an above average season for amount of named storms but we don't know where those are gonna go. You could have 8 million storms out there, but if they stay over the water, we'd be in good shape. Or you could have a so-called quiet season. We had that back in the early 1990s where we had, I think it was six or seven named storms in 1992. That's a quiet season, so hey, everything's good. But one of those was Hurricane Andrew and that plowed into South Florida, absolutely devastating. So. We don't know where these are going to go. So yes, while you hear chatter about a, a slightly above average season, that doesn't mean a storm is going to move into where you are. So that's kind of the anti-hype part of this. Of course, though, you want to be prepared for a pretty active season as a whole, which is what we usually are because if you're watching this, you may have uh, interest or you live in the Caribbean, over toward the Bahamas, Bermuda, parts of Canada. I know we have a lot of subscribers from Canada in this. You know, we, we take our preparations or our precautions. Now, the concern will be throughout the season is that heat content that I talked about, that the storms get very, very aggressive. I mentioned the possibility of the major hurricanes out there. We'll have about three or four, could be more, wait and see. I'm not positive on that, but the heat content, I am positive. I'm seeing that. I see that data is substantial. So with that, again, major hurricanes, when we talk about that, that's category three or greater. Those are winds of 111 or higher. So again, that would be 180 roughly kilometers an hour or higher. That's a category three hurricane. And again, category three higher, uh, devastating, especially once you hit category four, category five. Now, when do things crank up? March is usually very quiet. Only one name storm. I think it was top of my head. Back in 1908, there was one named storm that did impact actually the Caribbean. March is the uh, quietest month. It's not hurricane season yet. Neither is April. But sometimes in April, something pops up. In May, usually every other year, something develops. The hurricane season in the Pacific starts uh, mid-eastern Pacific, starts May 15th. In the Atlantic Basin, it starts June 1st. So it's not far away now. Uh, but again, usually in May, there's some signs we start to get those tropical waves moving off the coast of Africa. So very soon, I'll be tracking everything very closely. Things uh, really ramp up, though, once we get into August. August September and October, especially early October, is usually some of the worst weather. But we also need to factor in the general storm tracks in the fact that in the Caribbean, we do not need a name system to cause damage. If there's any season that would tell anyone that, that would be last season. We had that southern storm track, Trinidad and Tobago. We got rocked with, uh, uh, we had intense flooding, not just early in the season, but late in the flooding. So that's what I'll be watching on this channel, where those storm tracks in particular will be setting up, especially early in the season, because sometimes those patterns stick around. All right, for storm names this year, Arlene will be the first name storm, then Brett, Cindy, Don, Emily, Franklin, and Gert. I'll keep an eye on other areas, other basins, just to try to help uh, give people some advanced warning and systems. Other basins, other, other oceans, if you will, they have different names, different lists. So if you hear sometimes a name that's not on this list, it could be a different part of the world, but you can see the names on the list. Hopefully we do not get too far down the list. But again, I do expect extra storms this year, above average season, don't know where they're going to end up. I'll be watching the storm track for you. I will keep you posted on everything you're seeing. As you can see, I'm diving into everything, keeping an eye on things for you. Leave your comments. I'll try to get to those. 
Thank you for being part of this weather community. It's not for me. It's for all of us. Um, I do love weather, um, but I do not like uh, storms that uh, adversely uh, impact people. So I will do what I can during the season to just do my small part to help keep people safe and uh, give you the advance warning if storms are threatening you. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing this channel. I do appreciate it, and I hope you have a good rest of your day.